Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting. It is Monday, the 7th of August, 2017. And we're here with our an entire purple caterer here for tonight for our first topic for um, adopting let me see, Sunderland as a Purple Heart community. I've got my little thing here, so you want to you want introduce yourself? And do I stand up or? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And you're close enough to the mics. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Brian Ouellette. I'm the uh, department commander for the military around the Purple Heart, Massachusetts. Um, immediate past commander of Chapter 875, the Western Massachusetts chapter, which I'm a member of. <clears throat> I'm joined tonight by members of our chapter that I'm so proud of, uh, Purple Heart recipients and associate members alike. Uh, with me tonight is our senior member, Phil Gerard, who was wounded in World War II twice in January of 1945, liberated the Philippines. There's Phil right here. Hey, Phil. Phil. I'm also joined by Dave Brown, who was wounded 49 and a half years ago during the what Tet about Offensive. 50 at that time? <laughs> Yeah. During the You're 50 now? Of 1968, yeah. the United States Army. <laughs> I'm also joined tonight by Gamma Rosa, District uh, Senior Vice Commander of DFW District 7, which covers the entire area. Oh, yeah. from, the, from the Amherst Post, okay. and he's going to see uh, how Sunderland does it. And we okay. want to bring this over to Amherst okay. as well, and Gamma is working on that uh, right now. Okay. And uh, we're going to see how this is done. We're also joined by our associate members, and our associate members are our family members, our loved ones who have supported us through service and in our return to civilian life. They've been with us the entire way, and they continue to serve with us here, uh, taking their time out to volunteer for us. I don't think my kids will call us a volunteer evening, though, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you're on duty. <laughs> so these are our associate members all, also with us. Okay, great. Well, thanks for having everybody here. Glad to have you. It's our honor to be here, sir. Um, so, just a quick question: What other communities around here have, have done this already? Just so, like, if folks want to look at things. Absolutely, Sunderland uh, would be the uh, about the 90th community in Massachusetts okay. to become a Purple Heart community. And other communities include Greenfield. Tim here is from the Veterans Office here for Greenfield. I know he represents Sunderland as well, and Greenfield is one of those towns. Northampton. Holyoke, Springfield, Chicopee, uh, Ware was one of the, uh, I believe it was the first Western Massachusetts town to become a Purple Heart community. Uh, East, East Hampton, East Long Meadow, East Long Meadow. As a matter of fact, we were in uh, Long Meadow today for a presentation of signs and uh, commemorating their Purple Heart Day, which is, which is uh, today. Okay. Oh, and it's usually like a sign at the entrance where you typically where you see the regular, you know, entering. That's right. That, that's right. The yep. the uh, the Purple Heart Community Project is a is a basically a oh, perfect. And the, yeah, we have signed to, to present uh, in a bit. Um, the Purple Heart, like uh, yeah, it's yeah, a Purple Heart. Uh, the community Purple Heart Community Program is a uh, partner of the Purple Heart Trail Project. which started back in 1992. Uh, this the community the Purple Heart Community Program operates the same way. It's a symbolic pledge by a town to honor and stand by its Purple Heart recipients. And through the use of appropriate signage, uh, it provides a visual reminder to all who pass those signs that others have paid a high price for the freedom to live and move in a free society. So that's the ultimate goal when we do a Purple Heart community, that we move towards the signage portion of it. And uh, Tim can tell you that they've been working on this in Greenfield. Signs can be purchased, sponsored, donated, all the above, or a mixture thereof. And uh, so we don't. Uh, basically, the burden does not have to come to the town, but often, uh, as happened in Long Meadow today, they did purchase sites. So it, it really depends on the situation, and we could work with you on finding solutions for that. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Tom? Or? Gentlemen, thank you for thank you for your service. First, um, it's an honor to be here in your presence. Um, thank you. Thank you. The, the Purple Heart, I, I guess, Enfield, Connecticut, is trying to be the home. Is it Enfield or Windsor? 
Uh, Enfield, Connecticut is the, it's the home of the, per, of the first recipient of the badge of military merit, Elijah Churchill. We have a very direct connection to him because his final resting place is actually Middlefield, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is, uh, uh, is uh, a military grade marker, has it right on there, badge of military merit. And there's only three of them that, I, that are, are known of. And uh, so that is correct. Enfield sort of the, uh, in this area was the Mecca for it, but um, there hasn't been a lot of activity in the Connecticut Military Road Purple Heart in the last several years. It's all been based out of Western Massachusetts. And I know, and I know many of our uh, members who, who had the ultimate calling are awarded the Purple Heart as also, That's as a symbol of their service. I, I can't say enough about the organization and about the receiving of that uh, award. So I, I fully support Sunderland becoming a Purple Heart community. It's, I really do appreciate it. So uh, today is so appropriate for that, being Purple Heart Day. On this day, on seven, in 1782, General George Washington established the Badge of Military Merit. And was, uh, the badge was awarded to three individuals, one of them Elijah Churchill from Enfield. Uh, the badge was meant to be a permanent decoration by General Washington. It was forgotten about for the next 150 years. And as 1932 was approaching, the bicentennial birth of George Washington, the Army began to uh, explore ways to honor George Washington, his life and times, his military achievement. And they happened upon the records of the Badge of Military Merit. And at that time, General Douglas MacArthur was the Army Chief of Staff. And uh, General MacArthur, uh, having served in the trenches right alongside his, his troops in the First World War, himself being wounded twice, uh, took a very personal interest to developing this medal. He approved its design, uh, and he made sure that the award was prepared and ready to go on Washington's birthday on February 22, 1932. Uh, the recreation of the connection between the badge of military merit and our modern Purple Heart, making the Purple Heart the oldest decoration, happens by President Hoover and by legislative action out of respect for General George Washington. So the badge was never discontinued as of 1932, so its lineage goes back to 1782. That's how that, often I'm asked, okay. why, why is in the Medal of Honor the first one? <clears throat> because of legislative and executive action in 1932, it made the badge of military merit the oldest decoration. A neat little history of it. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely. Thank you. Oh, Question no, as, as, the, uh, as the proud son of uh, veterans and knowing the value that um, the value that um, our democracy is uh, covered by their efforts. I can only suggest that we do this uh, with uh, great pride and expedience. I really appreciate that. And this, the, the Purple Heart Medal is a medal that, as you can see by our visit here, transcends the generations. A World War II veteran, a Vietnam veteran, I'm an Afghanistan veteran. And uh, by contrast, my son, uh, Kevin, uh, living up in New Ipswich, New Hampshire, was wounded seven months after I was in Afghanistan also. And uh, as a matter of fact, he spearheaded New Ipswich to become a Purple Heart mm. town, the first in New Hampshire, and we have a presentation there tomorrow. Nice. So uh, I'm proud of my son's efforts here as a member of the military or the Purple Heart. Cut from good cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all right, well, uh, just a regular vote on this? Yeah. I think uh, motion. Yeah, we've got our proclamation. Yeah, it's entirely, yeah. yeah. If, if I could also, um, if you gentlemen have an opportunity, I'd like you to, I, I don't know if you had an opportunity to walk through our Veterans Memorial that we have out. Yeah. It's just oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yes. I, Prior to your yes. yes. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I was going to mention. We were here early, so. Yes. Uh, Sherry took us out and showed us. Oh, good. Walk. Okay. You, you can really judge a town by how it treats veterans when you see a, a, a Veterans Park like this. And I, I shared a story earlier tonight. Last year when the wall that heals came to West Springfield, mm -hmm. I was tasked with the job of finding faces of the, for the wall of faces, uh, pictures of Vietnam, uh, those that made the ultimate sacrifice. Those pictures were either not there or uh, of low quality. Yep. Uh, Richard C. Graves is one of those people. Yep. And I arrived here at the wall to find Richard C. Graves' name with the star next to it. And your library staff was so outstanding, helping me find his picture, which is now in the National Wall of Faces that, that I got right next door here. So I'm, I'm proud That's of nice. it. And I, I think the town's also really proud of his Memorial Day Parade, too, which we, we uh, take 
great pride in too. My, my so. daughter is a former Sunderland resident as well, and she also served in Iraq. And nice. uh, she she spoke really highly of the, of the veterans' activities in this town as well. Great, fantastic. Uh, should we read the proclamation? Makes right? perfect yeah. sense. All right. Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Whereas the, the people of the town of Sunderland have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all the citizens of our community who have selflessly served in the armed forces that has been vital in maintaining the freedom and the way of life enjoyed by our citizens, and whereas citizens of our community have been killed in action while serving in the armed forces and have been posthumously awarded the Purple Heart for their ultimate sacrifice, and whereas citizens of our community have been awarded the Purple Heart for their bodily sacrifice of being wounded by the hand of the enemy while engaged in combat, and whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest American military decoration and was created as the badge of military merit made of purple cloth in the shape of a heart with the word merit sewn upon it on August 7, 1782 in Newburgh, New York by General George Washington, then reestablished as the Purple Heart on February 22, 1932 by General Douglas, excuse me, Douglas MacArthur. And whereas the heritage it represents sacred to those who know the price to wear the Purple Heart, and whereas August 7th is nationally recognized as Purple Heart Day, and now therefore be it proclaimed, we the Sunderland Board of Selectmen hereby proclaim, proclaim Sunderland, Massachusetts, a Purple Heart community honoring the service and sacrifice of those from our community who were awarded the Purple Heart while serving in our nation's wars, and also be it proclaimed, we, the town of Sunderland, Massachusetts, will recognize August 7th annually as Purple Heart Day <clears throat> and urge people and organizations of Sunderland to display the American flag as well as other public expressions of recognition of our Purple Heart recipients. Motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. We have something for you. Uh, oh. Yeah. Honorary sign. If I may uh, present to you this proclamation uh, from our Certificate of Appreciation. Uh, certificate of Appreciation presented to Sunderland, Massachusetts, on becoming a Purple Heart community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, honoring all who made the ultimate sacrifice and those who were wounded in action by the hand of the enemy while defending our country in all wars from Sunderland, Massachusetts as well as honoring August 7th as per Purple Heart Day, Simon Brian will have commander of the military order of the Purple Heart. This is for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys it. guys want to take a picture? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. We like taking picture. Thank you. And we also have a presentation from our, uh, come on up, crew. Uh, <laughs> let's present oh, fantastic. Oh, so guys, let's present the got the camera? Yes, we need a camera. <laughs> We can use mine or we can. I'll take a picture. How about yours? You can post yes. it quick. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get it up. Thing up yep. Oh my God, my camera's in my car. Gam, you got it? Uh, He's got Gam's it. got it. Thank God, okay. Amherst has got her make, back. Barbara has her too. Barbara has one? Yeah, yeah. we want to make sure we have all yeah. of our... Yeah. Amherst is bigger, you're going to need more signs. Do you want to go behind? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to come behind? Yeah, come yeah. on. All right, we're going to go behind. I can do that. I have my camera. I have the flags in the background. Exactly. Come on, guys, come on in. Barbara, you can't take a picture. Come on in. Come on in, guys. Yeah, you got to be We're used to filling in the blanks. <laughs> Josh, I want you to hold the sign. Come on, yeah, hold, hold the sign, hold Josh. The sign. That's a great come on, Zach. Yeah, you're, the one who, you're the one who kept it a secret. So. Dave, come on uh, in tight. Zach, you can come hold on this one. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Zach, I'm right we'll in here and hold that one. Right in front of your desk. Come on, Zach. There you go. Right there. Hold it up. Can you see everybody? Smile, guys. Smile. I know you got to have me in there and take up three people. <laughs> That's called backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, game's going again. He's, I'm getting a lot more of that these days. He's exact. Leverage those against Drop Amherst. He's nice. got the wide lens. All right. Go ahead. Thanks and, so much. Cam is an avid Facebooker, so this will be. Oh, it's right up there. <laughs> we'll get right, right, right up. Right up. <laughs> be down the stairs and it'll be on <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. I can't wait on my phone. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Can I keep that one? Hey guys, do you have something else for these? Do you have something else for them? I think you guys do. Got to leave this on the front of the table. I already, uh, oh, the stickers? Okay, yep. we got the stickers. Yeah, that's good. That's great. And so that's an example of the signs. And uh, like I say, we can work with Tim and us. And, yeah, you know, we'll great. See what, you know, see what works best for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, sir.
people that make this sound. Ted Abenzo? My dad was a CV at the CV. I was in the Delta. There you go. I understand. He's there for three tours. Thank you very much. Oh, really? Yep. It's the Oh, I have to, but go it on every day. Oh, I can see. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Hey, thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really? Yeah. My cousin. Nice to meet you. Hey, thanks. Nice to meet you, sir. I see Dan slipped out. So nice to meet you. Thanks so much. Thanks for Thank you your service. Oh, really? A schmoozer, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> She'll tell you. Yeah. Have a good job. Yes. Thanks. Have a good Brian, night. Did you, good meeting. Did you, one more picture with Gam? With the, Brian, did you, yeah. did you find out a little story about Richie Graves? When he, his brother still lives in town. He was an he was A1 pilot. Right. right. And uh, he grew up in town, got his pilot's license when he was 16. Mm -hmm. um, his mom never came to one of our services, our Memorial Day services, until the, uh, the memorial went up. Oh, wow. And that, that was really closure for her. Wow. So we, that family, they sacrificed a lot. That's incredible. The yearbook write up on him was so descriptive. Mm -hmm about who he was, you, you got a real yeah. real feel for him. It, it his, was, bro his brother, actually his brother just moved back from town within the last oh, year. Oh, wow. Well, you guys got my cards too. Is anything, wanna, if I can do anything for you guys on this, uh, on any more time. He's taking more time. Yeah, 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 if you don't, if you don't mind. You guys, you guys mind? Thanks so much, Brian. I got hers. I got it. You guys want to do one more picture with the people? I don't care what anybody says. One more picture with the Yes. For what they did. Here's one more picture, Phil. Yeah. We're going to do one more picture. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Another picture? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. I think I've been in your phone before. I think. <laughs> it, was, it was pitch Maybe night. Once or twice. All right. All right. We can't all of this time. All right. Everybody pile in. Put Gam in the middle. Gam. You put me and Gam in the middle. You got me in the middle. Like two holders. <laughs> All right, somebody, they can, yeah, they can somebody come back stand up. in front of me so you don't see my belly. Hey, oh. <laughs> Good job, Pop. I guess we need a game. We're going to make sure boys? we don't want to. That's okay. Here, you guys. We got him right there. Come on, in. Please over here. Come on, right 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 in here. Come on, Zach. I need one more quick picture. Right Josh. Right. All right, stay over there. We don't want you to pick you. Just tell us how we look. Somebody make another wisecrack. Two more. Two more cameras. Oh, oh, holy smokes. Don't worry. Like a family See, reunion. Yes, you've got to use three cameras because you know two of them are going to get broken. <laughs> this is real wide lens. <laughs> First picture with three lines. You should see the next couple. Uh, wonderful. The camera actually right. refuses to take the picture. It's no, I, I can't do it. There you go. Built them right into it. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you. All right. This is great. You're welcome. Oh. Is there a copy of the signed proclamation? If you have one, I'll take it out. And this will, what I do is I send this on the headquarters, and this will be on the national website. Okay. So I'll be added to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I do right. information about yep. where the site was made up. Yep. Oh, okay. How many of you? Yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Because I figure at the very least we want one with every like entrance to the town side. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think we have. So we have at least three. There's one in 47, one when you're coming over the bridge, and then there's one on the other end of the 16 when you're coming over the bridge. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. That's I'm what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a department guy. We're trying to have a meeting here. Okay. Uh, the metal's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yep. That's good. Yeah, because we all get it. So if you send it to like the select board email, everybody will get it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Hey, can we get one more? Brian. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. That guy. Did all make it back? Yeah. Right. Thanks so much, everyone. Good evening, we should have given you a plug, Dan, you know? So we should have given you a plug. You're hiding back there, you know? <laughs>
Ah, all right. So now that, now that things have quieted back down to our next topic. And our guest is in the back there, Mr. Chris Collins. Come on down. You're the next contestant. <laughs> yeah. Nothing We're going like, to talk nothing, about FCAT. Nothing like how to follow that. Yeah, right. <laughs> what a great no pressure. I mean, it's a, do, do you want to hold that up? Or? <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about this town is how much respect it has for its war people, its veterans. And so this is a fantastic addition. Yeah, it's, it's a good... That's why I wanted to mention the, the Memorial Day service, because it's, it's always pretty and impressive. And Veterans Day is coming up, too. Well, and Veterans, too, yeah. Yeah. It's always pretty impressive when you're down there and, the, and it's quiet down by the cemetery. And it's pretty cool. So, we're here to talk about FCAT. Well, there's a situation that's developed, and Sherry and I have been talking about this. And the Department of Revenue has kind of changed the rules yep. regarding how public education and government funds are handled. Used to be that towns would have an agreement with a peg access provider, in this case FCAT, for Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Whaley, every quarter we would send you an invoice based on the amount of money generated by the number of subscribers you have in the community. Right. And the, and the checks from those four towns would, would be our operating budgets for the year. There's no agreement, no written agreement between FCAT as an entity and any of these towns. It's always just sort of been, we've been providing the services we haven't been, I don't think, fully designated as peg access providers, but we have been doing essentially the work of peg access providers. The DOR decided to change the rules for bookkeeping purposes, and now peg access money is considered by the state to be town funds. Now, in other communities around the state, if a town declares an entity, a public access station, peg access provider, the checks go directly from Comcast to the, the pay access provider, and they bypass the town completely. But since every town seems to want to have this money go through the town's bookkeeping, DOR has said that in order for those funds to be expended, as I understand it, they have to be appropriated by town meeting. Now, I've gone through this pretty extensively with Deerfield, to the point where I've actually had to produce a budget for them and produce a capital budget for them for the capital money that they got in their latest contract. Um, but there's no agreement, like I said before, between these communities. I gave Sherry a, or I actually sent to the tax collector, treasurer, an invoice, as I always do at the end of June, yeah. for the first quarter of the new fiscal year for $12,500, which is the quarterly assessment that we get from Sunderland typically. Uh, and I was told that we can't get that money because there's no agreement in writing between FCAT and Sunderland. But there's no agreement in writing between any of these communities. Right. Every town is sort of handling this their own way. The one that's been the most militant, I guess is the best word to use about it, is Deerfield. And, and to the point where I've gone in front of their finance committee, I've gone in front of their capital improvements committee to justify, which is something that we've never had to do before. I have no problem doing that. Yeah. All I want to make sure is that we have our operating budget. And you represent <laughs> right. $50,000 <laughs> of an operating budget that's pretty lean to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. So. What I would like to do, rather than try and get all four towns to agree on the same document, and this has sort of begun with, in Deerfield with Wendy Foxman, is get an agreement between our entities and you that basically says, okay, FCAP provides public access education government services for the town of Sunderland in exchange for a, a quarterly invoiced amount of money based on the number of subscribers you have. It doesn't have to be any more elegant than that, but I think Sherry's right. There needs to be something formal. <clears throat> it sounds like if it's not something formal, we're not going to get a check, which is yeah. makes our lives a lot more difficult. Yeah, right, right. So not quite a contract, but a you, statement of services. Not a beer field. <laughs> no, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very happy to, yeah, to yeah, present you to you an annual budget so you can see exactly what we spend. I have no problem. It's not like we're trying to hide anything. It's just not something that's ever been done before. No access station really, until very recently, has been required to do this. We are a, a, a private nonprofit 501c3 organization right. that effectively is, operates away from the control of any community. That's the way the, the law established PEG access. The intent was for it to be an independent entity that was funded specifically by money from the cable contract. You guys 
can't really use that money for anything but peg access. Exactly. So it's sort of sitting in your account, sort of sitting there not being spent. And so what we need to do is figure out and develop an agreement that my board can sign off on, that you can sign off on, that effectively says every quarter we get a certain number of dollars based on the number of subscribers and that we perform we are the pay access provider essentially of Sunderland. Right, because I mean it's basically a way to say, okay, well we're going to grant the cable company essentially a monopoly, so that's their return yeah. favor in that sense for grant. Exactly, I and mean, the cable money. companies would rather not even have this in place, but it is yep. what it is. The law is the law. You have a ten-year contract now with Comcast. So, so it's easy. No Chris, Chris, it's easy. Can you just put something together and send it to us? Yeah, I mean, I, well, the thing is, something is already been yeah. put together. It's, the, the only question I have is, is there sort of a two-step thing like we do? an agreement right now does, does it make sense then to look at a longer term bundling of the four towns into something i honestly or permanent or getting getting four towns to agree on anything i mean i went over through this a year ago with the MOU. Oh, wow. it was very very right. hard you know we tried to put an mou together that basically took the towns out of the mix right in terms of the money so you wouldn't have to worry about it, it would go from the company to us and we ran into wicked pushback from conway I think you guys were a little yeah, reticent we're, about we're, it. We were reticent. And so is Deerfield. And so we just abandoned that. But there still does not exist any kind of an agreement. Yeah, and that makes sense. I, right. It's a you know, and, and I understand why the accountant took the position he took, but well, it, it kind of just throws it out there and then doesn't leave an instant right. mechanism. Don't, to don't solve re, it. The only reason there was a, any type of disagreement was because Sundle didn't want to support other towns, such as Conway. Conway, when we first historically when when we've been negotiating and this goes back to Bob White uh, Mark Gilmore um, um, Bill Whitmore Bill Whitmore mm -hmm. um, years ago, was it? Um, Larry's brother Harold Risley and, and, and the other the, the Jane and mm -hmm. the other people basically we wanted to ensure that each town received the amount of money that they put into it okay so when the contract was finally established Sunderland offered Whiteley and Conway into the into the program. Conway refused. Whiteley refused that initially. Also, Whiteley came on board. Then Conway. Then then all of a sudden resources were going to Conway. It's like well, Conway had the opportunity to join back when we had the first seat. They never did. So why are our resources now going to Conway? They're putting nothing into it. Right. So so and and what resources meant? It meant like when we spent eight thousand dollars the first year the first year on the legal expenses, Deerfield and Sunderland spent eight thousand dollars. Conway spent not a dime, yet now they're getting resources. So my perspective is I want to see Sunderland money, that the Sunderland put into it, I want to see those resources come back to Sunderland. Sure. That's it. So anything I sign, so if you can find something <laughs> that says Sunderland's going, to, Sunderland's going to get the resources that we put in back and that they, that they don't go out to other communities, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's because see what ha happened in, in the past. So our, our resources have gone to support other communities. See, there's a document that Wendy Fox from Deerfield was developing, yeah, I think. Which, which you have, I saw that, yeah. that I think, you know, if you get run that by your town council, and, let me, and I'll take a look at it, and we don't have a lawyer per se for FCAT, we haven't got a legal line item expense, but I hear what you're saying. I, I would prefer to have an individual agreement with each of the towns, and basically it, has, it doesn't have to be anything more than just... Sunderland is, is declares Frank, uh, FCAT will be the peg access provider, which means we'll cover your meetings, we'll cover your town meetings, we'll cover as many events as we can. And we're already, you know, we're living here. So, I mean, it's, right. it's not like, at least for the next five years. So, I feel like that would button it up. It would make everybody feel good and legal. And every year, I'll submit to you a budget of what we're spending. If you want me to go through the finance committee, meet with them, I'll go to town meeting. Usually you guys do that anyway. Yeah. I mean, you, you represent about $50,000 of what is now an 160000 plus operating budget. It's not an insignificant amount of money. Right. Um, I don't want there to be an interruption of the flow of it. So the faster we can get this figured out, yep. the better for us all, especially for us. Makes sense. Shouldn't be difficult. So if you want to look, right. what, I guess, what's the next step? I can bring this to my board. We meet this Thursday. Yep. Let them know this is coming. And we can probably have a vote in September, you know, once we have a document that works for everybody. So it doesn't have not, does not have to be a real. And the other the other part of this and this has nothing really to do with this, but I want to bring it up is, you guys got fifty thousand dollars in capital money, 
when the last contract was signed. Mm -hmm. Now that capital money is obviously at your discretion. Um, if you want us to produce a capital budget, I mean, for example, these microphones you're working on are pretty antiquated. There's improvements can be made over here to create a better quality product in terms of the meetings. Um, we've been battling with Comcast about IP, you know, IP, static IPs and a bunch of other stuff. The, that money is what that's intended for. Right. right. Um, I guess I need some guidance from you as to how you want us to go about trying to get that money. It has to be voted on, as I understand from DOR, on town meeting floor, which is how we did it with Deerfield. Okay. Um, so we can figure that out down the road. But So you'd like put a TV there so that we can put a computer there and we can put things up there, project, and so yeah, that try that's, to, that's one instead of, things of looking that we at can Scott's look hand at, all the time? <laughs> and that is, and we have a, a mechanism in the switcher to be able to put that on the to shoot over to. But you, what you need is a new projector, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. That's all peg access stuff that can be done. Yeah, let's talk about that. All right. Yeah. But in, in terms of this, this is there's two pots of money. This capital is operating. Right. right. This is the operating that we're, we need to get squared away. It's right. the most important one. Yeah. The yes, it is. Yeah. That's why it's on. I mean, we're okay. I mean, we have a what I would call a prudent reserve, and I'm pretty frugal. I don't spend a lot of money unless I absolutely have to, although with this move, there's been some unanticipated expenses. Yes. But that you know, we're in good shape financially. It's not like we're hurting without that 12 grand, but I don't want to mess around with waiting for it too long. So. Yeah, yeah, if I could, if, if I, if I'm reading a follow-up from the IGR, from DLS, an acronym soup, yes, yes. And, and it says, you know, that they've been a fair amount of inquiry and that towns, I'll, I'll paraphrase, communities will now have until the close of fiscal year 2018 or June 30, 2018, consider the available accounting options to take necessary actions to implement. So that's, that's straight from the DLS. Correct. So apparently it's, it's, not, it's not unique to us. It's unique it's to not unique. It's common wealth-wide. I called the auditor yeah. when we ran yeah. into the glitch. I said, what do you do now? You yeah. know? And he said, oh, right. you're not the only one that's right. having I mean, <laughs> Conway and Whitley, the before, they, they've just sort of, I don't know if they aren't on top of this yet or not, mm -hmm. but they've given us their checks for this quarter. Now, maybe next quarter they'll say, wait a second, time out, buddy. we got to figure that. Yeah. I just assume negotiate and figure these out individually. Right. That way, because Wendy would like to do a four-town agreement, and we can do that down the line, but it's well, like herding cats to get that done. Th that's what I'm thinking. You, you, you get a short-term solution, like a really short-term solution. What do we do right now? Then, like an individual agreement, and then you look at a four-town one. So you can look at the possibility of establishing an enterprise fund if you would rather apportion the money that way. Some towns have gone that route. It's not required. It's it's very. It's basically you put a line item in your budget that's it's for contracted services. Right. We give you a budget, X number of dollars. Here's what we're spending our money on completely. Yeah. So, are you your own entity when it comes to yeah, pay? Really yeah. But well, we also have a year. Yeah. None of the none of our that's yeah. the other thing. It's, it's you know I there's there's that's I mean, a big one. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. And this is what the one I run into with Deerfield. Deerfield is suddenly acting as though. I'm one of their employees in a way, and then I'm sort of doing all this extra stuff, which it's I don't mind being helpful, but there's no document that right. says... Right. And it's part of your job description. Here, right. I, and look, I'll do whatever you guys need. If you need help with stuff, we're there. That's what we do. We're facilitators. That, that was a... Whole, it was a whole wait a second. <laughs> that was a whole idea behind FCAT, right? Yeah. That's how FCAT became, came into... That's the whole reason we have FCAT. It, 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 it and more importantly, FCAT was able to even to negotiate because we were supposed to help tie in with the schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you should be helping the schools as well we because are. that that was the premise for FCAT to be formed. We are. We, and, we and, have a great and, connection with the schools. We do a lot of the sports and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. And and I'm not questioning. I'm just I'm just saying that that's, that was a whole impetus for right. sort of for FCAT from the beginning, and and as long and as long as as long as you don't, you know, as long, who, who signs your paychecks? Who signs our paychecks? Yeah. Well, uh, you as a director. I was going to say, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. the chairman of the board signs, the, signs the, any, any kind of checks to the, the chairman of the board. Of the FCAT? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're not a Deerfield employee? No, I, no I'm not. And when I say that, I, I don't mean that to, to imply that they're doing anything untoward. It's just there's, I, when something breaks Chris, in Deerfield. Chris, Chris, Chris. You forgot Tom's been dealing with Deerfield for the I last know. three years. I, I figured you understand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand and, what and you're saying. I love saying. all of our towns. Don't get me wrong. I am happy to help. 
And I do too. It's like children. You love us all. I love every town that's on this side of the river. But I'm happy to be living in Sunderland and working here. And suggestion. So this is a good time to do this because you know that's fine ge geographically and, and logistically. And you guys can decide if you want an enterprise fund or however you want to do the bookkeeping. But expect that when budget time rolls around, you're going to get a budget from us mm -hmm. that essentially says, okay, here's what we're spending the money on. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And we'll go from there. And then uh, we'll get an agreement that we can all sort of live with. So, does it have to be but see, we, we already do that. We just do it at the selectman's meeting instead of, instead of the... Uh, Town meeting for we, that's what we've always done. Is that we've done it here? Yeah, peg access is at the discretion of the selectmen, right? That well, we yeah, sold. but not anymore. If the DOR is saying that it's public money and we have to go through the budget process, that it's the the, the, fun, the town meeting money. is the one that makes the money. And, yeah. and, and historically, and you're right. It's been the board of selectmen that's dealt right. With so this. we've already done that. We we've asked we've, you, we've asked Pe we, we've asked FCAT for a budget every year. Yep. We just didn't give away our. We've always come in. Um, we've been a pain in the side of FCAT for a number of years because we've always asked for a budget and some other town didn't ask for a budget. We did that. So we were kind of, the only thing now is that we just, made, it's just one more article on the town meeting warrant. For us, it's not a big deal. Just a yeah. formalization of the budget. It's, not, it's right. not a big deal. So yeah. is, is, this, is this as simple for the first quarter to have an MOU from FCAT to the board? That's what I was wondering, just to get a one pager, deal. provide peg access for FY. 18. Yep. Well, and you want to do it year well, to year, probably, right? Well, at least at least for this year, while yeah. the while the dust is cleared to figure right. out what yeah. the final path is, right? Yeah. You simply had. Sense. We're not entering into a contractual agreement that's already been done. Well, your contractual agreements with Comcast, not with us. Yeah. yeah. That's See, that's 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 where there's a confusion. The contract that Sunderland has is with Comcast for 10 years. There is no document that delineates what we do. We just sort of been doing it. We've Your been charge sort of, doesn't no, describe no. providing of services or any of that. There's, there's no document, not even a side memo that says FCAT is the peg access provider for these four towns. Yeah, We've been sort of operating as if we were, right? Without any kind of a formal agreement. This before the statute was before the statute Correct. was adopt, changed and adopted. Exactly. And we adopted that at last town meeting. Yeah, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. The landscape has changed with regard to. <laughs> Peg access funding. That sounds like a great way to send the whole thing out to bid all over again. Well, you could. That's an I, option. I'm not saying it's something we want yeah. to entertain, but it sounds like that's a great big wide well, door that's opened up. And this up. is one of the things that I think was one of the intentions. I can't say for sure because mm -hmm. who knows what right. DIY was right, thinking. Right, right, right. I think it was more about bookkeeping. Yeah. And there's, there's all this public money out there and, and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in some communities' cases. Sure. And Where does that money go? Really it's just sort of hanging out there in the wind. Uh, good point. And I get it. Yeah. So, right, because the, so one the motive yeah, to take yeah. the, oh, the effort of the state level to do that, yeah. because otherwise okay. what would be the point? Yeah. Um, so we don't put together in concert with them? <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering, in the statute, there's a, as Sherry just pointed out, there's this, this uh, piece under Section 2 of 30B called the Grant Agreement. And it looks yeah. like it's a relatively simple one-page piece. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually what Deerfield did mm -hmm. this past year. Yeah. We have, my board never signed anything, but that's what that's how they handled the bookie. Okay. They they turned it they they use it as they view it as a grant essentially. Mm -hmm. It's it's money that they can't spend on anything else. That makes sense. And then the town meeting just yeah. you know we give them a number and then they <coughs> just plug it in. So it's something we can do this year while again this dust settles get you paid up at least for the first two quarters. Yeah. Well, you could also if you have a special coming up in the fall, you could also put the whole budget on the special warrant. Right. Right, right, uh, right. And you know, I give you the dollar figure, which is it's twelve five times four, which is yeah. like fifty grand. Yeah. And you could do that that way too. It's up to you. I mean, okay. I just want to get an agreement done so we can get paid and there's no more ambiguity. Right, right. And then we can, you know, do it again next year if we need to. And the the other problem is that my budget cycle does not necessarily line up with yours. Right. It's good to now because every one of these towns yeah, is going to get a budget. Same appropriation. Exactly. Because right. I usually don't have a budget set until late May. For the June meeting, because that's how we do it. Yep. We're going to do it differently now. For sure. So, what, if I could, Mr. Chair, what's mm -hmm. your preference? You want to do the do the full Monty and have a full description of services and do it all in one piece? I, I don't. I don't think you need to go that far. I think. Okay. I think all we have to do is what you just said is sort of a grant, a grant, a grant agreement. Right. It can, you know, consistent with the statute. My board's going to be fine with it. Okay. They'll sign off, I'm sure, because um, they. What other choice do we have? And not that it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to tie it up. Right. 
and you'll be the only one of the four towns that has an actual agreement with us for now. So right, until the other ones do it. Until the other ones do it. Mm-hmm. And Conway is about to renegotiate their ten-year deal, so they got to do something. So. Mr. Chair, if I could, yes. uh, maybe we could uh, suggest that we get this grant agreement language for our next meeting, so we can have a vote. We're going to we'll be in the rears at least by the first quarter soon enough. Yep. We we have, and and as Tom has said uh, prior to this, we have been uh, sticklers to detail when it comes to the formation and the implementation of FCAT. When how uh, many times, Tom, have we mentioned, you know, once it gets on its feet, once it gets on its feet. Well, now that it's on its feet, I'd hate to, I'd hate to have a statutory requirement and an accounting line somehow cut the feet out from something that we've mm-hmm. worked on for 15 years to get on its feet. It makes right. no sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely on our feet. We're doing pretty good, you know. There's always room for improvement in anything. But right. I think financially we're on solid ground. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in terms of, of the mission of telling the stories of these four towns, we're, we're on track with that. Okay. I just, this is sort of kneecap me a little bit because it's the act, it's complete opposite of how we've operated before. Right. right. But in a way, this is better because, in my feeling is because there's no ambiguity now. Right. In the long life. run, it'll be a little painful going through it, but in the long run, you're right. It'll yes. be better for everybody. And, then, and nobody has to wonder who's supposed to do what. Yeah. Right. Okay. So good. for our next meeting, if we're good? Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Great, great. So okay. for you? We're good. Thank All right. you. I'll, I'll notify the board that this is coming at the next meeting, and we'll probably have to have a vote in September. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we can wait till then to catch. Great. Thanks All so right. much, you. Chris. Thanks. Appreciate it. Give me a minute to get back there. <laughs> She's got it. Good night, Chris. Thanks, right. Chris. Good night. Um, so our next up on our agenda is the minutes from 724. Motion. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Along those minutes, Mr. Chair, if I could. Yeah. Have we got a uh, schedule yet from uh, George about the patrol across resolution? Not yet. He was on vacation last week, but I'll uh, touch okay. base with him. Again, we made a commitment to a timeline to make sure we get inside the fall season. Right. Yeah. Good because we'll be fast approaching before it's, you know it. It was, it was 55 right. yesterday yeah. morning. Right? I know. I know. <laughs> Great paving temperature, by the way. Yes. Yep. Perfect paving weather. Um, okay. And then the next one is Board of Selectmen updates. And the only, I'll go because I probably, the, the quickest, I just have an update on we have a dog hearing, which will be here Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. And we're, uh, we uh, decided on. We need to get a notice for televising that. A little head of, heads up on that, I would suspect, to Chris. I mean, I, I know we don't have an official agreement yet, but you know, <laughs> someone can take it. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Um, so, Tom, um, I, I, we, we were notified uh, last week that the uh, town of Sunderland did receive from the state ten thousand dollars for the uh, three hundred celebration. So. I would like to thank um, the efforts of Steve Kulik um, and Stan Rosenberg for that. Um, Steve and Stan have worked together on <clears throat> many things for the town. Um, and for us, they, stay, they both work very hard for us. I'd just, just like to thank Steve. Um, Steve was our main contact, and I'd just like to thank him for, the, uh, for all the hard work he put into that. I'm sure it wasn't easy because I read the budget. There was a lot of red ink next to a lot of towns for, uh, for a lot of other things. So I would like to thank both, both our elected representatives. I think they did a great job. Very much appreciated. Uh, thankfully, Mr. Chair, sure nothing to update this there week. You go. I'll, be at, I'll be back at it next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in full force, you a little, a little respite there. Yeah, there. All right, and then Sherry. I see some exciting, exciting VoIP news. Right. <laughs> a recommendation for the award for the um, Voice Over Internet Protocol phone system um, to Valley Communications. Um, funding for this is through the IT grant that the town received last mm-hmm. year. Yeah. And then they're urging us to spend that money as <laughs> quickly as possible. So. We did look at a couple of different um, options, and I feel that the um, proposal that was submitted by uh, Valley Communications for the TPX system um, is the best way to go. 
um, the savings monthly on recurring costs um, for the TPF system. It's about $262 a month. Right now we're paying between seven and $800 a month. Um, so, so we're looking at a good, so, so our costs are going down? Yeah, the monthly costs will down. go down. Yeah. We won't be on the old Centrex system anymore. So, so we got a grant that we don't have to pay and we're going to save money on our monthly cost. If the grant is for the nice hardware job, and the infrastructure. Oh, nice job. Thank you. <laughs> because, you know, there are many people out there that think that the uh, that our administration is running this town right into the ground. And driving it in. Not only do we, yeah, it's a double whammy in terms of savings there and our ongoing mm -hmm. operating costs and the same thing with lighting and other things that we've been looking mm -hmm. at. There's a lot of good things going on. Yeah, as, uh, and as the solar comes, you know, is it, I mean, it hasn't been in that long, but yeah, as we see start full year. to, yeah. right, we'll see that. Yep. And with any luck, we'll get the other, <clears throat> if anybody in the utility world is listening, the other yeah. uh, installation up and going, like the we had originally planned. Conversion. Yep, the streetlight conversion. So there's a lot There's a lot of things going on mm -hmm. that maybe, uh, like it, as Tom was mentioning, don't always get out there, but we're trying to save money every day on everything, just like everybody else would. So Every single day. Yep, that's that's a good it's a good thing. And then uh, one thing we were talking about is eventually looking at our other facilities and getting them. Over. Would they be able to patch into the same system? Yeah, we could bring the others on at some point. So we do it like phase them phase in. Phase them in. That would be good. Yeah, because we've got the safety complex, the highway. Yeah. It's cool. it's, well, we'd have to look at that, and, and the then library. the library. Right. So I don't think we have anything else. Yeah, that would be all. So. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, I can make a motion to accept the procurement officer's recommendation to use grant money to enter into a contract with Valley Communications out of uh, Chickabee, Mass, for the installation and implementation of our VOIP system. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Three to zero, Sherry. And again, I echo Tom's point. That's a that's a grant rounds as opposed to tax rates. And again, it can be argued that's what we're supposed to be doing. But boy, we've been doing it. Sherry's been accomplishing quite a bit in a flourish since her tenure yep. has begun here. Agree. Yep. That's one of the good things. Mm -hmm. And then the five hundred dollar monthly savings. Right. right. On and on and on and on. That adds up. Yep. <laughs> so. <coughs> Brilliant. Any uh, any other excitement? Um, nope, that's it. Um, well, we'll do that afterwards, I guess. Um, okay, so our next item, so I need my TPX information over. TPS reports. TP <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I was busy stapling I, with my <laughs> red stapler. <laughs> Swing line. That's right. <laughs> Which we can still buy. That's right. Uh, our next one, we have somebody who would like to get involved with the 300th. What do you think? Motion to uh, appoint Amanda H Hanley to the uh, Sun on 300 Celebration Committee. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, three to zero, sure. Brilliant. You got a new Thank team you. member. <laughs> Appreciate it. Public comment. Okay. Public comment. Yep. Yeah. And then. Next is our public comment section. Do we have any public comments? Well, I have a question. Okay. Public question? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what does it say. It only says comments. Yeah, it just says comments. I, sorry. <laughs> we don't accept questions. Veterans Memorial Ventures. We are going to have a meeting, uh, me and the other two members of the Oversight Committee, on Saturday. My question is, what authority do we have to get those benches resurfaced? I mean, do we, do we investigate what it would cost to get that done and then present it to selectmen, or what is the process? It is the process. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think, yeah, I think you just you been, stated it. Have you been in contact with Will? I think he did the lot, not, not that I'm asking him for help, but uh, about re-oiling them? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said the last time they were reworked, do you uh, know who did that? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, 
Okay. Okay. I'm just thinking about the method and then uh, how, how it was. It, has it lasted a, a good couple of years? Yeah. And they're designed for that kind of maintenance. discussion of uh, what kind of funding is available for that. I know there was a lot of, uh, there were several donations. I believe we have a budget for that. A line yeah, budget it for would that. be helpful if we, if we knew what the budget was. Okay. For some reason I recall, and like, this could be just bad um, memory, but Veterans Memorial Ground Maintenance is $2,500. Okay. That's grounds maintenance. That's Yep. The trees and yep. stuff like that. But I mean, upkeep of the wall, would you consider that uh, upkeep of the yeah. benches to be ground to ground? Yeah, okay. I would consider it. Yeah. Okay. Why do I think that there was extra oil somewhere here? There is. They're in the Sluckman's office. Okay. That's right. what I thought. Right. That's what's the oil's in the Sluckman's office. Her husband okay. That's what I think. Yeah. I remember her That's why. Well, I mean, just, if it's just oil that it needs, I mean, we can look at that. I was just curious about the process because we're going to have the, we're going to have the meeting and none of us are sure what, right. you know, what, the, what the real process is. Uh, and I, I honestly, I couldn't remember if it was a, with a, if it was like a an oil or like it's, an encapsulation. It's oil. Circle, it's, down, so. it's downstairs and it's like when we'll be done in five minutes, we can go down and show yeah, you the can. Okay. Right. So that, uh, those are the two cans in our closet. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then, it, if it's just oiling, that should be pretty easy. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always organize an oiling posse or something like that if we have to. Uh, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, it's usually easier than trying to put on like a film finish. So. Right. Okay. Oh, can I ask one other question? Oh, sure. You opened up the floor. Oh, look at that. You just let him ask one. <laughs> I've been told that there's consideration for a road that is going to, if it's approved, will. Go past the Veterans Memorial. I just would like to be involved in that if if that is an actual fact, because Point. one of the, the the original intent of the Veterans Memorial was that it be a place of solitude and reflection, and putting a road by there, in my opinion, would be a mistake. But yeah, that that it's, that, a, shared, it's, it's, a, it's that. a shared it's a shared opinion. Okay. With many other residents in town, not just singular. So I think there's many residents that agree with it. And we actually had to just, I, I personally don't know how a discussion, a lengthy discussion that we had not too long ago can be totally forgotten. But, uh, the, the Pathways Committee is, if you, you know, you can talk to those guys about it too, because they were involved. And it's an, it was only an idea essentially that they were batting around on a plan. So. This is a good time to talk about it before it and progresses. Right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, okay. concerns? <laughs> I guess. All right. Thanks. Um, and then we have some new business. Yeah. From uh, some recommendations from George, our highway superintendent, for our annual fuel award. Motion to uh, go with George's recommendations. And he's recommending diesel from Karis Oil, Karis Oil for $1.94 plus 24 cents a gallon for road taxes, and then gasoline from Dennis K. Burke for $2.01 plus 0.2441 per gallon for road taxes. If, if I could, before seconding, Mr. Chair, this mm -hmm. is for FY18 total? 18. Correct. Okay. I'll second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, for dessert, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe, unless there's anything else, that concludes our exciting agenda for these. <laughs> That'll do it. <clears throat> Just um, a couple of updates on upcoming meetings. We have a, a wayfinding and branding kickoff meeting here on 
the 16th, and then our rec next regular selections meeting will be on the 21st. So anybody who um, doesn't get enough of branding and corporate branding in their own private and uh, work lives, come on down and we can talk about it because we're going to do it as a town. So if you haven't had enough branding, as long as it's not West Mass, that's right. Oh, yeah. Or is. Yeah. yeah, it was a miserable fail. <laughs> yeah. We haven't we haven't branded yet, yeah, so before exactly. we can rebrand, we have to brand. Good ourselves. point. Good so. point. <laughs> uh, so, move to adjourn. All right. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much, everybody.